Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to take your magic items, your spells, and your monsters from D&D Beyond and bring them into Foundry Virtual Tabletop. Let's do this. Before I show you how to do this, you're gonna actually need to install a module known as the D&D Beyond Importer by Mr. Primate. We covered how to install and set up this module in a previous video. I'll leave a link down in the description below if you need that, and I'll also leave a link up here in the cards. In order to show you how this module works, I'm gonna to need to go over to the screen share for the rest of this video. All right, so now that we're here in Foundry, we're gonna go into our settings. I do see that I have a little update there for 7.9, which is totally fine. I'm running 7.8 right now, just for the sake of this tutorial. They did release 7.9 just recently. We're gonna go over to configure settings, module settings, and we're gonna scroll down to our D&D Beyond importer. Here are my D&D Beyond importer settings. You can actually see where I have everything uploading in the different compendiums. You also do see that we have a Patreon supporter beta key. Now, this is a way that Mr. Primate kind of helps support his kind of development of this module. So make sure you support him on Patreon. This will kind of gatekeep you from actually being able to import the monsters, but we can still do the magic items and the spells. But at the end of the day, like this individual is giving us a great service by giving us this awesome module. At least we can do is help him out. Now that we have it all set up, we can actually jump over to our compendiums and the DDB Muncher. This is actually Mr. Primate's module at work here. So you do need the Chrome extension and all that stuff that we set up before. I'll leave a link down in the description below for that. But you can see here that this munching, what it's gonna do is it's gonna take the cookie that we had from that previous video that we put into our specific settings here. And it's gonna actually pull this information from D&D Beyond from that cookie from your profile. So anything that you have, whether it be spells, items, whatever you own, the assets that you own, it's gonna be able to pull that stuff in. So right here, you can see we have the spell munch and the item munch. First thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna bring in our spells. So in order to do this, we have to make sure that we have this set up the way we want. I have the iconizer installed, so it's gonna use some of the iconizer stuff. Uh, it's gonna use icons from the SRD compendiums, and if it doesn't have an icon, it's gonna just pull the spell school from D&D Beyond as opposed to anything else. So right what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna click on Spell Munch. Once we click on Spell Munch, click, it's gonna start downloading our spells. Now this is gonna take a while. It's gonna pull stuff from D&D Beyond and pull them into Foundry Virtual Tabletop. So we're gonna actually wait a little bit. You can see it's updating everything. So 492 spells to bring in uh, between Tasha's and Xanathar's and all that stuff. So we're gonna be waiting a little bit. I'll see you in a second. All right, and we're done importing our spells, all 492 of them. So we're gonna come over to my DDB spells. I know I have a ton of stuff in here and a lot of compendiums, but it's because of the fact that I have a lot of different uh, modules installed on this thing. But we're gonna go into DDB spells and you can see here, we have some redundancies with some of the spells and this could be just because there's a previous version of the spell or whatever the case may be. Don't worry about that so much. What we really care about is the spells that came in here uh, with the actual artwork and stuff like that. Again, all 492 spells. So now we don't have to worry about bringing the monsters that have spells that we don't actually have and all that kind of stuff and being confused. It's all right here. Now that we're done with the spells, we can close that. We're actually gonna now move on to items. You can see here, there's a couple more options. We can use the D&D Beyond item images if they're available, or we can use generic item image types if they're available as a final fallback option, in addition to the SRD icons and stuff like that, if they're available. All we really have to do is click the item munch and we're gonna let it run. It's gonna take a little while again, so we'll see after it's done downloading. Now that we brought in those 1,470 items, if you don't mind, uh, can you hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel? It really does tell me that you guys and gals are enjoying what you're seeing and it also gives me more proof that I need to continue doing these D&D Beyond uh, importer or these Foundry Virtual Tabletop style tutorials. All right, now that we're done with the shameless plug, thanks. Uh, we're gonna go into DDB items and you can see here we have everything. There's gonna be again some archives and redundant but it's mostly so that way you can still use those archived items that you have on your old character sheets from previous uh, renditions of the items. We also have all the different kind of armor types and everything's in here. If you want just a mundane breastplate, that's in here too. All the regular mundane items and magic items are in here. It's a really powerful tool. I love it so much. It makes my life way easier when I'm trying to make these things for my players. Now that we're done with magic items, let's talk monsters. Now you're gonna need that Patreon supporter key like we talked about. I have a base Patreon supporter account, so it's gonna be a little bit different depending on which level you're in. I only can pull in a certain number of monsters per search term. If you have the full-fledged account, it'll bring in every single monster that you own from your D&D Beyond account, but I currently can only bring in certain amounts of monsters at a time. It's more just so that way, it takes a lot of load on this module to bring in all those monsters all at once. So it makes sense that it's a little bit higher tier of a benefit. But basically what you do is we're going to look up a monster type. So let's just put in goblin as an example. And what it's going to do is that if you went and searched in the 
uh, compendiums that you have and you search up goblin, it's going to pull in all the goblins that you would find in that encounter builder that exists on D&D Beyond in the first like couple pages. So once we put in goblin, we're going to hit monster munch and it's then going to look for the different monsters with the term goblin in the name. So it looks like it's only found two. If I put in hobgoblin, it would probably bring in more, but it looks like it only brought in goblin and goblin boss. I'm also going to put in hobgoblin just so you can also see this as well. Hobgoblin actually yielded five results, so this will be a better example. All right, now that we brought in those goblins and those hobgoblins, we're going to go to DDB monsters and we're going to see everything that I've imported previously. You can see that I've like messed around with this a little bit, brought in a bunch of dragons, but if we come all the way down here to G, we're going to find the goblin here at some point. There he is, along with the goblin boss. Again, if it doesn't have a specific piece of artwork associated with the monster, it's just gonna plug in this standard little NPC or depending on what kind of type it is, like this is a humanoid, so it's gonna put in a humanoid. If it was a aberration, it would put in a little aberration token that you've seen before on d, &D Beyond. But either way, we also have our hobgoblins. You can see here, it's brought in the goblin, the hobgoblin, the captain, the devastator, the iron shadow, and the warlord. And again, like I said, it's only gonna bring in the first few on the list. So if there's a lot, so for example, with dragons, I had to put in different iterations of blue, black, brass, all those ones, just so I could get all these in here. It's gonna take some time. Again, if you wanna do it all at once, you can actually upgrade to that higher Patreon supporter level, but just for the base account that he has on there, it brings in everything you need and you can eventually go through and parse everything that you wanna bring in, it's fairly simple. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is gonna end our tutorial on how to bring in those monsters, those spells, and those magic items into Foundry Virtual Tabletop from D&D Beyond with that D&D Beyond import module. If you all have any questions or if there's something I didn't cover that you want answered, make sure you put it down in the comment section below. Also, if you have any other Foundry Virtual Tabletop questions or things that you want to see covered at different modules or other tutorials, make sure you throw that down in the comment section as well. If you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe because that not only helps the algorithm and helps me out as a content creator, but also tells me that you want to see more of this stuff in the future as well. I hope you all learned something today and until next time, happy gaming.